be here now. Just be here now. Welcome to the Be Here Now guest podcast. This series features a collection of teachings and conversations centered around mindfulness, spiritual growth, and living a life in balance. Each week, our diverse network of guest teachers and hosts offer up wisdom and practices from a different spiritual path and perspective. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit BeHereNowNetwork.com slash donate. Stories for a living future. How can we hold the light that is left and allow it to guide us into a living future? Over the last decade, I have written a series of stories about how to survive these transitioning times and look towards a living future. Stories can help us navigate the inner and outer landscape of our journey. They can help us to see the signs that can guide us, the pathways we need to follow. They can help us to look over the horizon of our immediate circumstance, find the deeper meaning of surface events. At the present moment, the story of humanity and its dynamics of conquest and control are in direct conflict with the story of the Earth and its patterns of biodiversity, a conflict that is destroying the biosphere, endangering our shared survival. Yet amidst this accelerating catastrophe, I believe that there is a new story waiting to be lived, which returns us to values that are at the core of our human nature, care for each other and for the earth, as well as the primary awareness of the sacred nature of creation. But how we make this transition to a living future depends upon how we hold the light that is left and let it guide us through this present darkening. Watching the horror being inflicted upon Ukraine, civilians bombed, children traumatized, atrocities committed, cities become ruins, as well as the many acts of courage and kindness. I sense that this is a pivotal moment in our collective story that reaches far beyond Eastern Europe. It speaks to a threshold we are crossing in our greater human story, a story of our shared humanity and the need for the light and love of our spiritual awareness the need for kinship and community. Love, care and community. As we walk into the liminal landscape of the present time, when so much is uncertain, what are the values we need to support us and reconnect us to each other and the more than human world that surrounds us? The past years of COVID have taken us into a more fractured world, where the initial response of We are all in this together, quickly dissolved, revealing social inequality in which the poor suffered most, and the division between frontline workers exposed to the virus and those able to work from home. Then social media, which was supposed to bring us together in new ways, instead spread disinformation and conspiracy theories, further fragmenting us. And while online communities provided some support, Can pixels pretending to be people really replace the warmth of a touch or the friendship of sharing a cup of tea? We have wandered into a world of alienation without fully understanding the road we are traveling or how to find our way back to a place of belonging. I am fortunate to live in a small town beside the ocean where I know the people in the store, chat to the postmistress when I pick up a package, And the mechanic in the garage is an old friend helping with extra hours when the mice invaded my car. Here there were no arguments about masks. And in the dark days of the pandemic, the community provided food for those in need. When my granddaughter caught COVID, she was able to stay in her cabin in the woods. Her grandmother baked banana bread, which I left hanging on her door early one morning. Fortunately, she soon recovered. Care and community are bonded together in simple acts, and living close to the land, we are also aware of the greater community to which we all belong. Watching the woodpecker with his bright red head, eating seed from the bird feeder, or seeing the newly born fawns grazing the grass outside my window, I feel supported in many silent ways. I sense these threads that connect us, 
reminding me of this vast tapestry of life surrounding us, from the movement of the tides in the wetlands to the California poppies opening yellow and orange to the sun. Love and community came unexpectedly into my own journey when I was 19 and met my Sufi teacher. After a grey middle-class childhood, I found myself sitting in her small room in North London, where love was present, together with meditation and a small group of young people. This community, bonded together by a search for truth, held me as my life unraveled and the dysfunction of my childhood surfaced. I felt I belonged for the first time and would spend each week waiting for the Friday meeting where I could sit in silence and feel fully accepted. After the meeting, we would often enjoy a South Indian meal down the street, masala dosa and chutney. Half a century later, I can still remember the taste of those dosas, as if meditation, friends, and sharing an Indian meal are stamped together in my psyche. Since those early, desperate days, the company of friends has always been central to the path the simple sharing that belongs to the soul. As Rumi says, Go, O heart, go with the caravan. Go not alone over the stages of the way. Over the years, our Sufi community grew from a few friends in a small room to hundreds of wayfarers around the world. But the sense of belonging and the way that kindred souls find and support each other on the journey always remained. This is a quality of friendship that reaches from deep in the inner worlds, where the soul's longing is born, to the outer world where we help each other, bringing soup to a sick friend, sharing laughter and tears. The primal knowing that one is part of a living community, founded on love and service, true companionship, is like a caravan traveling the desert of our increasingly soulless world. Of course, As in any family, there are disagreements and difficulties, but this quality of inner connection provides a deep source of solace. I often wonder how it would be to walk alone in this world, how easy to lose one's way. This was all part of the spiritual awakening in the West that began in the 60s, and the same thread that drew my own teacher to sit with her Sufi master in his garden in northern India also drew Ramdas to India and the feet of his guru, Neem Karoli Baba. Both returned with a simple message of love and service, knowing that spiritual life is never for oneself, always for others. As my teacher wrote after the death of her Guruji, before she returned to the West, I know that God is silence and can be reached only in silence. I will try to help people to reach this state. This is a promise and I will keep it. And so she returned to the small room in North London beside the train tracks, where a few years later I came to sit at her feet and feel the invisible presence of her teacher. Sadly, much of the spiritual energy that came to the West at this time became corrupted by the three doors of Maya, power, sex and money. It was also subtly subverted by New Age spirituality, with its focus on individual well-being. So much spiritual potential was co-opted by the ego in its dreams of self-fulfillment. So many deeper and simpler truths lost in the process, which overlook the basic fact that the spiritual path only begins when we turn away from the self. In the words of a Sufi saying, take one step away from yourself and behold the path. My teacher taught from her own experiences. Again, writing just before she returned from India, Love for the unlimited is also unlimited. That's why our hearts have to be broken and become nothing to be able to accommodate the unlimited. A living spiritual tradition always takes one beyond oneself. This may be expressed in the form of selfless service, as in Ramdas's Hanuman Foundation, which embodies the spirit of service inspired by his guru, or in the often painful journey beyond the ego and its patterns of identity as expressed in the Sufi process of fana, annihilation, that leads to baka, abiding in God. This awareness then reveals itself, for example, in the bodhisattva tradition in Buddhism, compassion for all living beings, or in the inner mystical realization of the unity of being in Sufism, 
We are an expression of a living oneness far beyond our individual self and are in service to that whole. Seen, for example, in the engaged Buddhism of Thich Nhat Hanh, that comes from an awareness of our interbeing with all of life. We are then in service not just to our human community, but also to the more than human world that surrounds and supports us. At this time of ecological devastation, an awareness of our spiritual interconnection with this greater community, together with a knowing of its sacred nature, as was always understood by indigenous peoples, is especially important. These different qualities of community offer support in diverse ways. Friends and neighbors create a sense of belonging to place, and the land itself reveals in its many voices how we are interwoven in a mystery that reaches deep into the earth. And this becomes visible in the simple beauty of a bud breaking open in springtime, a hummingbird drinking nectar in the garden. And in my own journey, a spiritual community has been an extended family that speaks to a deeper sense of belonging. Even as in our present world, I feel increasingly like a stranger in a strange land. Love and care for each other and for the earth herself tell a story so different to the discord and divisiveness that shout all around us. It takes us back to the roots that nourish us in the soil and in the soul. And this present spiritual community also reaches back centuries, a living tradition of groups of seekers, often sitting at the feet of their teacher, bringing together their light and aspiration to help attract a greater light to guide them, an inner presence to support them. As Christ said, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. These are the living centers of light of this time, which have a shared purpose beyond the individual journey. As in the dark ages that followed the breakdown of the Roman civilization and the Christian monasteries that kept alive the light and literacy in Northern Europe, spiritual communities of all forms are necessary to hold the light that is left in the present time of darkening, the spiritual light that will be needed to find our way into a living future. The pandemic exposed the cracks in our world, and then the war in Ukraine came, brutal, unforgiving, full of atrocities, villages, towns, cities destroyed, mass graves dug and filled with bodies for no reason other than power and conquest and amidst the ruins came the kindness of strangers, caring for millions of refugees. Soon the climate crisis will bring its own darkness, already showing its horrifying reality in Somalia, drought destroying an ancient pastoral way of life as millions face famine. In this landscape, we will feel the increasing need for values that support our shared humanity for ways to walk together through this darkening time to where the future is waiting. We need the threads of love that connect us, the care and compassion that nurture us, the communities that can sustain us. We need to know that we belong in the depths of our being, as well as in our feet touching the earth. We need the kinship that is felt in the heart and the hand, the deep bond of love that lives in all things.